Okay, here I've completed the project I wanted to build. And here's going to be the output. This row of LEDs and this row of LEDs is the receiver. Now I only have seven zero to six of them built. Uh, it can go up to ten, but it's very repetitive, so seven's more than enough. And this right here is going to be the sender transmitter. And of course we have our clock and our synchronization circuit here. And now I've got this capacitor in there so it scans much quicker. And now I'm going to hook up the bus to the first time slot. And we can see our first light is lit. And of course we can add to that. I'll turn on the second time slot and then we can go down to zero five here like that. This is the diagram of the circuit. And all the way to the left there, this is the transmitter. This is what's going to be putting the pulses onto the signal bus. And the signal bus is going to go over to the receiver and the receiver is going to decode and light up the appropriate LED. We also have a clock to drive both the transmitter and the receiver and we also have a sync circuit that keeps them in sync which is very important. Now when I put a signal onto the signal bus what will happen those pulses will be sent over to the decoder and at the right time slot this is time slot zero and remember both the receiver and the transmitter are in sync if I get a signal from the transmitter and when the pulse generator also puts out a zero pulse that's when that LED for the zero time slot will light. Likewise if I send a pulse out on time slot one that will light and I put it out on time slot 5, it will light. Now you'll notice that the trainer I had 7 uh, built, and here I'm showing only 6. It's very repetitive. All you have to do is keep repeating and adding the time slots. Now I've got this clock running fairly fast, so because of that, it looks like all th three are lit at the same time. And that may not show up on the camera quite as well because of the scanning of the camera and the scanning of the circuit. But if you're standing there looking at it, you can't tell that they're flickering at all. It's also possible to see the pulses on the bus with an oscilloscope. Okay, the bus is not terminated yet. I'm going to hook the bus up to pulse zero, the first one. And now I'm going to 
hook up Pulse 2 along with it. And now Pulse 5 right there. So here we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that would be 6. So you can see that we can have as many pulses as we want, or that we have. Turn them on separately, or multiples of pulses. Okay, here it's still on one, two, or actually that's zero. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And we have those two on, plus if we hook up another wire to the bus, we can turn on and off the other time slots while the other two time slots remain on. Now I'm going to demo this process in slow motion. Okay, here I'm sending three signals on the bus. Now I'm going to add this capacitor and you'll be able to see that when the time slots on both the receiver and transmitter come up that's when the output lights Let's see what happens when the transmitter and receiver get out of sync. Here's the same setup, but now I'm going to defeat the syncing mechanism. Turn off power, turn it back on. Okay, as you can see, that's not right. I didn't change any wiring. Still not right. Okay, let me put the sink back in. So it's very important for the transmitter and the receiver to be in sync. This system is capable of multiplexing one to ten signals over a single bus. Some systems of course do a whole lot more and also they multiplex not just data bits but voice for instance like a cell phone. Also multiplex systems I demonstrated how they can get into trouble when they get out of sync. Have you ever had to 
turn off a unit, unplug the battery, plug it back in, and turn the unit back on, well, that's getting everything back into sync. Thanks for watching.